Number five. So Aberdeen goes straight in to Group A for this one. Winners on six previous occasions of this competition. And rounding off Group A. It's 34. It is number 34. That is Sterling Albion. So that concludes Group A. My thanks to Premier Sports who provided me with that footage for today. So the Scottish League Cup group stage draw has been made. And Aberdeen were drawn in Group A alongside Wraith Rovers, Peterhead, Dumbarton and Sterling Albion. Match day one will be on either the 9th or the 10th of July. Match day five will be on either the 23rd or the 24th of July. Hi there. Welcome along to Ali Beg ABTV here on YouTube. Thanks very much for tuning in. Got so much coming up on the show tonight. We're going to get reaction to that draw from you, the fans, football administrators. But we're going to start with the last guy to lift a, a trophy for us back in 2014. Earlier today, I caught up with Russell Anderson. Hi, Russell. Great to see you. Okay. It's a decent draw, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. Um, on the face of it, reasonable. I would expect they would be happy enough with that, yep. And how about getting bedded in? Will the will Jim use this competition to bed the new players in? to get? I know it's an old cliche, but to gel them, what do you think? Well, they do start pretty early, to be honest, and with the, the games coming around fairly quickly, so I don't think you'll have any option. Um, I know they'll try and get as much training as possible done prior to that, but there's no getting away from it. These games start pretty early, so he's going to have to use the games as, as an opportunity to try and get the players to gel. I don't think it'll be much of a problem, really, will it? Because we've been so used to playing early European qualifiers that the lads won't have much time off. It, will it be an issue? I, I don't think so. It's a different competition, obviously not the one you would want to be in, but the same kind of rules apply that I think players have become used to coming back earlier and starting the season earlier. So from that point of view, I don't really see it being an issue. OK, you were obviously our last captain to lift a trophy. I think it's about time we lifted another, isn't it? Yeah, it was too long before we lifted the last one. And I can't believe how quickly time's flown since 2014. So, yeah, um, to get back and challenging for them, I think would be a, a good start after the last couple of seasons. But yeah, it, it's been too long. Fantastic. Mate, listen, great to see you. Thank you for coming on. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, on. mate. Take care. Bye. Good to see our captain looking so well. Our former captain, 2014. It feels like such a long time ago now. Oh, dearie me. Let's really hope we get off to a really good start this season. We need to get off to a good start. Jim Goodwin has already come out and said it's important that the rebuild has an impact during the Scottish League Cup group stage. OK, so we drew Peterhead. Bit of a local derby going on. I think it's safe to say that a lot of people, especially from Peterhead, were absolutely thrilled when the name came out of the hat. I caught up with General Manager Martin Johnston to talk about the draw today. And this is what he had to say. Martin, it's fantastic to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me this afternoon. So tell me, what was your reaction when you saw your name pop out of the hat and go into Group A? Um, rather pleased, Ali, I would say. Rather, <laughs> rather pleased. Um, funnily enough, uh, our chairman was hoping that, uh, and, and, and competition aside, was hoping to perhaps maybe persuade Jim Goodwin to um, send a team up pre-season. Okay. Um, I think it's maybe three or four years, three years maybe since we last played Aberdeen uh, in a pre-season friendly. The only time since I've been here we played Aberdeen in a pre-season friendly with a bumper crowd that day. Um, certainly I think the, the, the Peterhead Dons fans appreciate the opportunity to, to watch their team against their hometown club um, because obviously they follow their side, the length and breadth of the country. So to, to get a game on their doorstep, they, I think they're fully appreciative. And having said that, um, you know, a lot of fans travel because it's pre-season. Um, they, they travel first opportunity they can to, to, to see their, their, their team. Mm. So uh, that's been scuppered now because <laughs> uh, 
Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll um, you know, at, at, at this moment in time, we don't know if we'll be at, at Peterhead. It, it could well be at Petaudry, which would be a phenomenal uh, thing, because believe it or not, it's almost 100 years since we last met competitively. It's Peterhead right. and Aberdeen. Peterhead and Aberdeen. Aberdeenshire Cup and Aberdeenshire Shield aside, with no disrespect to those competitions, um, Peterhead have only played Aberdeen once in a competitive game. And that would have been back uh, season, he says, quickly looking at the board at the front reception, 1923-24. And I think it's been pretty well documented what happened on that occasion. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, the, the, the tie should have been played at Peterhead. Um, but the, the board saw an opportunity to make an extra pound and play the game at Petaudry. Players looked for an extra wee bit in their back pocket yeah. and uh, it wasn't agreed. And a, a mystery 11 went against the Tons that day. And I think the score was, if I remember, 13-0. Uh, Correct. So we're looking for revenge, Ali. <laughs> it would be or, or, or Balmour. Just, we're just, looking for revenge. Just out of interest, Martin, what would you prefer? Would you prefer a home game or an away game? Oh, great question. Um, administrator, administrator hat on. I think all games should be played away from <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a lot of work. There's a lot of work goes into home games. Um, obviously, for the local fans, and for, for those who are maybe not able uh, to travel, and I know it's only just down the road, but you know costs are spiralling for mm. things and transport, etc. So yeah, it would be nice to have it at Peterhead, but the truth be told, it would, do, it would only be the second time in 100 years mm. since we've played at Petaudry in a competitive game. So for, for, from the historian point of view, and also from the financial point of view, because I think... I would be disappointed if Petaudry wouldn't uh, um, attract slightly more than the two and a half to three thousand that we would attract at Balmour. Okay. Um, so, so you know, financially, it would make sense. But unlike what happened in 1923, um, we certainly won't be swapping the tie. Yeah. Um, we'll just take whatever we get. Okay. And just to finish off, Martin, have you had a chance to speak to Jim, the gaffer? Very, very briefly. Um, obviously, competition comes very early. At the mm. start of the season, mm. um, we, we're still um, building the team. It's a it's a new club. It's a new team um, in respect that we've had a lot of departures over the summer. So they'll be bedding in. I think a term is. Um, I try not to get involved too much in the on, on the footballing side, but Aberdeen will certainly know they've been in the game. Remember, in past years we have beaten Heart of Midlothian, Dundee. Inverness, Caledonian Thistle, and only last year we, we beat Dundee United at Tanadice. So, you know, it's 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 a great opportunity for us to, to, to set our stall out early doors at the start of the season. Fantastic. Martin, listen, thank you so much. I, as you're a pal of mine, I don't know whether to say good luck or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll save you the bother. I'll just say commiserations, Ali, now. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Brilliant. Listen, have a fantastic rest of the day. Thank you so much, Martin. What a great guy Martin is. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's great to see him. Hey, listen, some of you are getting in touch on YouTube and being interactive, so thank you very much. Fraser Gunn, good evening, Fraser. How are you? John Mackay, good evening from the far north of Scotland up in Caithness. John goes on to say, it's more than a decent draw. It's an easy draw, surely. Um, Graham Watt says, good evening. Good evening, Graham. How are you? Al, my pal, good evening to you as well. Uh, Fraser went on to say, what a player Russell was. Brilliant defender. Uh, Fraser also says, we will definitely need to start doing some business soon so that when pre-season starts, we are ready to go. I think we're starting, are we starting to get impatient already? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Uh, John says, maybe not, but I'm expecting good wins against all the teams in those groups. I think it's safe to say, John, I think we are as well. Right. With, there'll be more reaction from you, the fans. That's still to come. But I just want to tell you a little bit about a very special cause, which has just happened in the past week or so from Scotland supporting 
Ukraine. I just want to show you some photographs that were sent to me from a guy called John Fairclough. They're a volunteer association which are registered under the rules of the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations. And they have been absolutely incredible by sending aid to Ukrainian refugees. I caught up with one of their organisers, John Fairclough, to chat more earlier today. Hi John, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. I'm actually quite intrigued. How long did you go across to Poland for? Um, I went across for five days. We left last Friday and I actually got home this morning at half past eight. Um, so a bit, a bit longer than uh, we expected, but yeah, five days. So how were you received over there? Oh, it was, it was overwhelming, Ali, honestly. Um, you know, the, the aid, they've really exhausted all their local resources. You know, the Polish people have been amazing. Um, so the volunteers, both Ukrainian and Polish, they couldn't believe that we had driven a van from the northeast of Scotland to Krakow for one. Um, so that, that already had the, the atmosphere emotionally charged. But then when they saw uh, all the things that we brought, the toys, the gifts, the you know, football stuff, summer clothing, and just loads of really good stuff, they were just overwhelmed, which was fantastic to see. I know you took some stuff from Aberdeen Football Club. I guess it was well received. Yes, it was. It was. The kids were so happy. Um, you know, the thing, the little things that, that bring joy to children, the football strips and Angus the Bull and, and footballs and all, all of that stuff. It was just, it was fantastic. It really, really was great to see. Have you got plans to go back? Um, yes, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's not easy. It obviously takes a long time to get there. It's quite difficult moving goods across Europe um, for various reasons. Um, but yes, I mean, this needs to be sustainable. The Ukrainian refugees need our help. Um, and yes, I'm planning um, to do, do some more in the future. OK, well, John, listen, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. And the work that you're doing is just absolutely incredible. And we will give lots and lots of information to make sure that people across the northeast and beyond can help and donate and help to the cause that you're doing for these people. No, that's fantastic. Thanks very much for your support, Ali, and your time today. Absolute pleasure, John. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, John. So you can find them on Facebook. They're providing support for families fleeing the conflict in Ukraine. The families have left their homes with minimal belongings and only what they could carry. So if you can, guys, please do support them if you can. Okay, let's get back to more reaction from today's Scottish League Cup group stage draw. I think it's about time we got some of the fans involved now. Earlier today, I spoke to Gary from my pals at ABZ Podcast. Hi, Gary. Always good to see you. Thank you for coming on. Let's get your immediate reaction to the draw today, please. Um, it's not quite the same as waiting for the draw on the UEFA website, is it? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we are where we are. It's 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 not the most inspiring of draws that we could have got. But at the same time, it's probably not as bad as it as it could have been for us. Um, I think this is one of those situations where I think them doing away with the regionalization of the League Cup draw this year for the groups is maybe not a it's maybe a bad thing. I think this year we were maybe at least looking forward to well, we might have some kind of derbies up and down the east coast, the places we've not played in a long, long time, but Hey, it is what it is. It's an opportunity, I guess, first of all, to exact some ghosts um, in Kirkcaldy from last season, um, whether we play in, at Starks Park or whether at Pittori, obviously still to be seen. Um, Dumbarton, we've played, I think we've played them now, wow, this will be the fourth time in the last nine seasons, so we're pretty familiar with, with those guys. Potentially our first ever trip away to Peterhead. We've never played Peterhead away in a competitive tie before as well, so that could be an interesting one. And then Sterling Albion, again, it could be at least, potentially, if it's an away tie, a first ever trip to the fourth bank, which has never happened before. So, I mean, I'm trying to take some positives out of it, but it kind of is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, and let's be honest, it's an early start. Games to be played on either the 9th or the 10th of July. It won't be long before the players are back, so a very short summer for the big majority of players. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not something we're unused to in recent seasons with playing European football so early in the in the calendar as well. So from that perspective, I guess it's not a massive change. The biggest issue here is now going to be, 
I think Jim Goodwin said a couple of weeks ago, the, the, the guys were getting maybe three or four weeks off tops. That gives you a really, really small window for bringing players in because we know how many players have left. Try to get a team gelling together if you've got that many guys coming in with games kicking off as quickly as they do. I mean, looking at the ties, I don't think there are necessarily banana skins per se in there. I'm saying that now. Um, don't quote me on this later, obviously. <laughs> but, you know, you still look at that and go, well, you know, Peter Head, well drilled under Jim McNally, has been there for a long time now. They will be up for it against the kind of Northeast rival. You know, Dumbarton are in terrible shakes at the moment, so I'd like to think that should be relatively comfortable. But Wraith Rovers, that could be a sticky one. Ian Murray's just gone in there this week as their new manager to replace John McGlynn. They'll be looking to get up and running sharpish. I mean, that could be, what we saw it last season, that could be a potential banana skin right there. It's, it's, a, it's a tall ass to get a bunch of new players to come in the door, gel quickly and get right into action. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a massive, massive task for the, for the new man in charge. Do you know what? I, I, I actually don't mind that so much because throw them in at the deep end and let's see what you're made of because we're all looking to these group stages to see how we have developed during the summer and how hard Jim Goodwin is going to have to work to get the team that he wants together. So I actually don't mind this chuck them in and let's see what they're made of. Am I right or am I, or am I wrong? I think I, I think if Jim Goodwin had had a better end to the season than what we had, I would have said, yeah, absolutely. I think he'd have bought time with the support at the end of last season, if that was the case. I think the fact that the end of the season didn't go particularly well, Jim's record at the moment is not great. And I'm not, and we've said this on the podcast before, this is not us sitting here with our bed sheets out saying Jim Gooden out or anything like that just now. But he doesn't have that element of, you know, goodwill right there at the moment with the support. So if he gets off to a ropey start in the League Cup group stages, he's under immense pressure from the word go. And that's the only thing I th think is the difficulty about trying to bring in as many players as possible. At the same time, you're right. If you're coming to join a club like Aberdeen Football Club, you have to be ready to hit the ground running, deal with these ties. On the face of it, we should be winning four out of four here. Yeah. And again, you can quote me on this later on when we get to the end of, uh, end of July and where we sit at that point. But we should be winning four out of four here. If we've not, there's big, big questions to be asked at that point already. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Gary, as always, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your weekend when it comes, and we'll speak we'll very do. soon. Cheers, Ali. Thanks, Gary. Bye, mate. Bye-bye. Hi, Gary. Oh, there we go. So if you want to listen in to the guys at ABZ Football Podcast, that's where you can find them. They've got a really good review of the season currently. So if you want to listen to the guys, please feel free. If you're just joining us, just a gentle reminder. This is what happened earlier today when we were drawn in Group A from the Scottish League Cup group stage. Sterling Albion finished 7th in League 2 last season. Peterhead finished 7th in League 1. Dumbarton actually finished 8 points behind Peterhead in 9th. And Wraith Rovers, well they finished just below the playoff spot in the Championship in 5th place. They lost 2-1, obviously we lost 2-1 to them last season at the first time of asking in last season's competition, but let's not remind ourselves of that, shall we? So again, thank you for joining us on YouTube tonight. Let's just go through some more of these comments for you. Alistair Flett, some banana skins there. Hawk says, time to right the wrongs from two fairly recent cup exits to Wraith Rovers. Absolutely spot on. So many of you actually saying that we should be winning all four games. And I have to be honest, it's difficult not to disagree with you. Okay, let's get some more reaction. Um, Colby Henderson, very much like myself, has got a YouTube page. He's a big Aberdeen fan, does some really good stuff on there. So if you want, check him out, Colby Henderson. I caught up with him earlier today to get his reaction to the draw. Hi, Colby. How you doing? Thanks for coming on, mate. Um, okay, come on then. Tell us what you think. Uh, what's your reaction? You know, it's obviously it's not the European games we're used to at this time in the year, but it's as, you know, it's as, it's as, you know, we're not really going to get hyped up for these, but, you know, it's just about getting through these early rounds. It's not the, you know, there's no glamorous ties, really, but um, hopefully about getting, it's just about getting the job done. We've played Dumbarton, you know, pretty frequently in recent years, mm. so hopefully we get a similar result against them. Wraith Rovers, the, the revenge story um, from this time last season. Hopefully it's a different game. Um, obviously, it's, they've got a new manager now. You know, we've got a new manager now, so hopefully it 
can be different. And obviously the Peterhead, maybe the Aberdeenshire Derby draw. What, for you, is the pick of the games? Which is the one that you're really looking forward to? It's got to be the Peterhead one, especially if it is away. Um, over the season, I've had a bit of ties with Peterhead. I went to the East Kilbride Cup game. Um, they've been pretty good to me. So it's got to be Peterhead. Obviously, I want Aberdeen to win, but um, I'm looking forward to it, especially if it is an away tie. Wraith Rovers as well, you know, if that is an away, I would like to see us get the revenge because it, it was a horrible trip last time. So, yeah. All right. So what's your expectations? We've got to win all games, I think, you know, realistically. But we're going into it now with a team that realistically are they capable. You know, we've still got to see us really, well, bring in anyone in this summer window. But we should realistically be going and going for the clean sweep. I, I think that that's, there's nothing less acceptable. Mm -hmm. However, you know, it, it, it probably won't work out that way with Aberdeen. Wraith Rovers will probably give us a tough game. Peter Head won't be an easy game. And Dumbarton, you know, they've, they've you know, run us close in games previously. So... You know, we've got to be winning, but I don't think it'll be so straightforward. All right, um, Kobe, listen, thank you. Keep up the great work on Instagram, mate, and we'll catch up again soon. Thanks for coming on. Cheers. Bye, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Kobe. So don't forget to check out his YouTube page. Just at this point, just want to quickly thank my supporters here on ABTV. Big thanks, as always, to Saltire Energy and to my new pals at Lux Scott, a jet class luxury vehicle company. If you want to travel in style, those are the guys for you. You can check them out on social media and that's how to get in touch with them. Their buses are fantastic. Right, just to finish off, I want to clear up some confusion because today the football club tweeted that it was Mark McGee's birthday. So it which prompted me to, sorry for dropping names here, but to text him to say happy birthday. So today is not actually his birthday, he told me. His birthday is in fact on the 20th of May, but many, many years ago, back in 1975, the Rothmans yearly book said his birthday was today and it's stuck ever since. So <laughs> we're five days too late. His birthday was actually on the 20th. Just a little piece of useless information for you. Um, guys, again, thank you for getting in touch. Andrew Nicholson, hard to get excited with the draw at the moment. Maybe more interest once we've signed some players, but can't imagine they'll pull in big crowds. We'll just have to wait and see. Hey, guys, listen, we're done. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget, we've got plenty coming up during the summer. Look out for some very special one-on-one -on -one exclusive interviews. We're so close to getting them over the line information coming very soon. Thanks for being with us, guys. We'll speak to you very soon. See ya.